words. We we tried to go through this sermon on last week. <laughs> My God, but the Spirit of the Lord came in this place and just told some stuff up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 5. This is Paul speaking. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one called up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was called up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for man to utter. And Father God, for your word on today, we glorify you. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you that the word is already blessed. We're praying, Lord God, that you would just empower the ears and the hearing of the people and their hearts to receive a word, Lord God. Empower my lips, Lord God. Use these lips of clay to utter a word that will help some poor soul find his or her way, Lord God. Hallelujah. Use me, Lord God, in order to speak a word of the true and living water so that they will thirst no more. Use me, Lord God, as you see fit as I fall into the background, as I recede into the background, Lord God, that you may come forth and do what it is that you want to do. You're worthy to be praised. You are more than worthy to be praised, Lord God. Ten thousand tongues cannot utter enough worship. But Lord God, we're going to praise you and press into your presence. Number four. In the matchless name of Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and glorify God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I do glorify God for all who are here this morning. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I want to even put my spectacles on today, y'all. You know, I was uh, in the midst of glorifying God, you know, and you know. The sheep know I glorify. Everybody know I glorify God. I begin to think about how good He's been to me, and when I do, the tears of joy begin to flow, and the tears don't smudge the glass up, so I can't see out of it anyway. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want to minister to you guys for a while. Well, thank God for seeing this shirt on today. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here on today. Amen. And I ask that you continue to keep Brother Keith in prayer. The Lord God has blessed him like you would believe. Amen. 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 See, that's what happens when the Lord begins to ready to bless you and take you to the next level. Huh? There's a there's a there's a birthing period that you may have go have to go through. Right? And I don't know any birth that occurs that you don't get some labor pains in. Amen. So as as we move forward, thanking God that God saved his life. Oh my God. In front of an 18 wheeler? Come on now. Bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. And nearly a scratch on him talking about getting out of the hospital for a day. Huh? See, that's that's what I'm talking about. See, when you serve God, he has a purpose for you. He'll bring you through some amazing things. What the enemy meant for his band. God turned that thing around. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Amen. I want to minister to you guys for a little while on this morning. Amen. About something the Lord dropped into my spirit a few weeks ago. Amen. I came fully prepared to minister it on last week, but my God. Paul said right there in this scripture, he said, certain things you came in up. Huh? When you get into the presence of God, there are times where you can't even begin to utter the things that you want to say. This is where tongues come in. See, because the Spirit knows what it is that you need to say. Hallelujah. Huh? Yeah. When you don't know what it is that you need to say, the Spirit makes his intercession by connecting inside of you. This causes you to begin to send up prayers to the third heaven. Oh, my God, my God. I, I tell you, my God. Paul, in his story here, was testifying of an encounter with God. Yes. He was talking about his encounter with God. He was talking about how he got caught up. He was talking in his typical, humble manner. He was speaking as if it was someone else. But it was not someone else. It was Paul who had got caught up to the Lord. 
He had been pulled up to a level of understanding with God. Now know that Paul is not speaking of his first encounter with Jesus in this story. Paul is talking about 14 years prior. He's talking about because his encounter with Jesus had taken place for perhaps 30 years or more prior. But he was talking about 14 years prior. Paul was very subject to having visions with God. He was very subject to having visions with God. So he wasn't talking about that particular experience. Huh? Paul was talking about another incredible experience, whereas he was caught up. The man who wrote more in the Bible than anyone else was actually lost for words. He did not know what it was that he could say about what he had seen and heard in the realms of glory. He was caught up. My God. He was caught up in the heavenly realms and he said there are words and things I saw that I can't even begin to describe to you. They're unspeakable words. This illustration here of the glory to be revealed came on the edge of his descriptions of his suffering from, for Christ in the previous chapter. He was standing before people. He was telling them how he had suffered for Christ. Huh? He speaks. And in the speaking, Paul speaks a revelation which the Lord had given him. Some scholars speak in terms that explain Paul being so subject to vision was because of his initial encounter with Jesus, which was on that road to do harm unto the Christians at Damascus. And they speak in terms of where his initial encounter with Jesus was like a tenderizer. It softened him up to receive of the Lord. It softened him up to be sensitive to the things of God. Oh, my God. Now, oh, i got to talk about some church folks now. See, nowadays in the church of God, in the church of God, we're so pious and hardened that, that we're not receiving of the Lord. Huh? Because we're so self-centered and wrapped up in ourselves, we're thinking that it's all come because of us, that we cannot hear a word from the Lord. Huh? We get so caught up in ourselves, so hardened, that we become so carnal minded that we cannot hear what just said the Lord. Amen. And the word of God, it teaches us that Jesus said, suffer not the children to come to me. Because such is the kingdom of heaven. Because they are tender enough and they are innocent enough to hear the word of God and to trust the word of God. Whereas we all carnal and caught up and all stuck in ourselves and thinking that we just too good. All title minded. Oh, we die. I saw something the other day Arch. Uh, what, what was it? Arch prophet or something. That was some crazy. Master. Master. I was like, what in the world? That's the problem with your church today is we will not allow ourselves to be used of God because we have our own personal holy shield of blocking the presence of the Lord from coming into our lives. And the word tells us, it says, I use the simple to confound those who think that they're wise. I use the simple to make them look stupid. You think you know. Okay, all right, all right. You think you know. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, you think you know. Mm -hmm. And all those things that are simple to those who are simple will be complicated to you. Oh, stop passing. Stop passing. Mm. This illustration came on the edge of Paul hearing that and Paul telling them how he, 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 he had been caught up by God. All the suffering that he had done for God. Huh? He, he, he's talking. This is why he's talking in terms, you know, of being humble because he know how people get all caught up in themselves. Oh, Paul, you think you something just because God don't talk to you 15, 20 times? You think you it. So Paul humbly revealed unto them this. He humbly revealed unto them that it was God's doing and not his own. Not his own. But see, Paul was so subject to visions and, and revelations of God because of his humbleness before God. Because of his humbleness before God. Huh? Paul knew who he was in the Lord, and he knew because who he was in the Lord would allow him to receive from God. Somebody was telling me the other day about a child who was saying, Mama, God just keep on talking to me. A baby. God 
God just keep on talking to me. And, 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 and the mama was thinking there was something wrong with the child. Something wrong with the child. But see, what you, what you have to understand is God will speak through and to anything that he has to in order to get your attention. Huh? But see, if you're not sensitive to you got the arch holy super bishop in your thing, you know what I'm saying? You are already in third heaven, and you're not going to hear from God. Your mind is going to be all caught up in yourself and what it is that you have and what you don't have, whereas you're not going to hear from God. I'm, I'm talking about encountering God in case somebody needs a title. Yeah. Encountering God. Encountering God. See, I'm not caught up on the titles and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm caught up on the actual teaching, what it contains. Huh? I'm not caught up on the title. I'm caught up in the teaching. Hmm? Even, even, I mean, even the word Bible would mean nothing to me if it didn't have some teaching inside of it. It mean absolutely nothing to me if it didn't have some teaching inside it, right? Right? Even just, even just the simple word God, if He did not have a name that I could call, huh? Yahweh, Jehovah, Yeshua, huh? If I didn't have a name that I could call upon, see, see, because there's power in the name. Oh, let me teach here. Oh, my God. There's power in the name. Huh? My God. Don't you know there's power in the name? Just being called God means absolutely nothing when it comes down to being called Jehovah. Huh? He, he didn't say, do it in Jesus. didn't say, call it out in the name of God. He said, in the name of Jesus. He put a name to this thing. Huh? Oh, I'm going to stop. Y'all ain't going to get that. Y'all oh, pastor crazy. What are you talking about? Oh, but there's just something in a name. There's something in a name. Now, back to the story here. The reason so many people don't hear from the Lord is because they're so carnal-minded. They're so carnal-minded, huh? And, and the more carnal-minded you are, that is, the more that you call profess being a Christian, but you don't know the power thereof. Huh? When the more carnal-minded you are, the more you be talking about, oh, I'm saved, I got dipped in some water, and you don't have a true relationship, that means the more you're not going to hear from God. The more that you're going to be all caught up in everything else that's going on in the world. Oh, my God. The more the more carnal minds you are, the more subject you are to be sitting here tweeting and Facebooking. Let me get my post in. Come on, sir. Huh? You get all carnal minded, and the more carnal minded you are, the less of a relationship you have, and the more likely you're going to receive the revelation and have a true encounter with the true and life culture. Hallelujah and living God. Woo! My God, my God. Oh, my God. See, 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 God is looking for, huh? He's saying, I've been searching. I've been looking. For someone who received my word. And the only way that you're going to receive his word, you got to come with a spirit of expectancy. Yes. Huh? If your mind is all on your grocery bill, all on your insurance car payment, if your mind is all on what's going to happen at your job tomorrow, then you're not coming in with the right expectation and you're not going to receive from God what God wants to give you because you are flipped into that instead of listening to the God. See, 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 if you want to see the move of God, you have to come with a sense of expectancy. God moves around you all the time. He's always at work around you doing something. But you miss it. You miss it. You miss it. You miss the move of God. It be little simple things to you that occur around you, but it's God that's affecting it. Huh? Oh, to you, it's so simple. I, my house points north and south. So when I come out of, out of the driveway to go to work and I'm on a dead end road, whereas to the, the west side is uh, a dead end, I come out there, I turn to the right, heading east, and I head right into the sunshine. Oh, 
and I see the sunshine. I take a lot of pictures of the sunshine. And I just, I realize that the only reason that sun shines is because God spoke a word to it. He spoke a word to that son, eons ago, and told that son, you are to rule the day. Huh? You are to rule the day. Told the moon, you are to rule the night. He told the son to get up each and every morning and do what it's supposed to do. And guess what? That son is doing just that each and every morning. For thousands upon thousands of years, that son has raised up. We can't be obedient to God for six months. Can't, I won't even pay my time for six months straight. Won't be obedient for six months. And the son, which is not even alive, is being obedient to God for eons. My, my, my. We went down said, I'm expecting, anticipating the move of God. The move of God. Not doubting, expecting. Expecting means that you are preparing for God to come. You are preparing for him to come because you expect him to come. Huh? You're expecting him to come at any moment. Huh? And because you expect him to come at any moment, you're not living your life in such a way which is contrary to God. You're not halfway a Christian, halfway uh, in the world. You ain't straddling the fence. You're living in anticipation of God coming at any moment. Yeah. Only his grace has kept him from coming that far. Only his grace has kept him from coming thus far. That's the only thing that's kept him from coming thus far. But he's yet sending signs and wonders in the north, south, east, and the west and telling you that his promises is true and he is coming. When you're expecting somebody to come to your house, you don't leave the house a mess, do you? You go on clean up. So shape make me paint five, six rooms. You go on clean up in anticipation of them coming. Every time you hear a car coming up the road, you're looking out there because you want to see if it's them. Every time a cell phone ring in the house or a house phone and you still got one of those, you're looking out and checking the phone and the call ID to see if it's them. You anticipate them coming. This is how your relationship would be with God. You ought to be prepared to clean up your house and prepare to hear God. Bless your name, bless your I'm expecting, I'm anticipating. Huh? You ain't gonna leave your house all in a wreck. Huh? Jesus come, the door came and get in, stuff in the way of the door. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Mm, too much I, I can't. I ain't going in there. I, I ain't going in there. Uh, 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 uh. Last assignment in the army before I retired. I was in charge of housing, soldier housing at Fort Lee, Virginia. And we would have these incidents where a soldier would end up getting actually evicted because they were not taking care of his government housing. I remember this one incident. Of course, my boss called me. He said, hey, we got an incident out of such and such a place. Uh, why don't you meet me out here so we can see what's going on? So we meet out there, and the police are out there, and they Pull the children, the military police out there, remove the children from the house. Social services, they're helping them move the children from the house. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I walk over with him toward the door and stuff, right? He hadn't been in yet. And he reached the door before I do, and he opened the door, and he's about to step in, and he did this. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? I walk in, I said, I won't put my foot in there. Throughout the entire house, it was just mess. Dog feces, cat feces, bird. I mean, you name it, whatever it was, it was it was like a cow had walked in there and exploded. Not taking care of that. Huh? Now, me in a position where I can say something in order to let this person keep their housing and give them an opportunity to, to do this over again, to clean up their mess and start over again, I couldn't even step into the place. 
It's the same thing with your salvation. When the Lord wants to step into your life, he begins, he opens the door, he steps with a foot there and like, I can't put my foot in there. I'm holy. I cannot step into that place. Huh? I will give them what they need in order to clean this mess up, but they got to be willing to receive it. Huh? They got to be willing to receive it. See, one thing that we used to do on the military base was that we provided the implements for a soldier to keep their house clean. They could go to this place and they could receive lawnmowers, they could borrow lawnmowers, they could borrow uh, shovels, they could borrow whatever they need in order to help keep that place clean. But if they didn't want to come borrow it, huh, and then they want to remain inside, oh my God, somebody better hear what I'm saying. See, the same thing with your relationship with the Lord. The Lord has given you tools. He's given you what it is that you need in order to clean up your life. But if you're not willing to take on the responsibility and learn and apply the word of God in your life, then you're going to have a whole bunch of mess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. One who's expecting in anticipation, don't expect a minor thing to occur. Mm-hmm. You're not expecting just some minor to occur. You expect a great move. Yeah. A great move. Mm-hmm. Huh? I was talking to you guys a few weeks about selling the leaves. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Talking about uh, manna. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Leaves and manna. Mm-hmm. And those are metaphoric to the small expectancies you have of God. Huh? You expect small things. You want to you wanna praise and shout and kick over two or three chairs because he paid a little bit of life bill. Huh? You want to holler and shout and kick over a few chairs because he gave you a bag of groceries or drop the price of gas for five minutes so you can get some good gas at a good price. Huh? You want to praise God for a little minor thing, but God said there's so much more to me than that. There's more than your mind can even imagine. You have got to learn to act. You have got to learn to see so that you can find. You've got to come with a spirit of expectancy so that God will bless your situation beyond your wildest imagination. Hallelujah. I look at those little small things like, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That's it. I got 15 cents. That's nothing. That's nothing compared to what I'm going to do or willing to do for you. All you got to do is come in with expectancy so that you can get an encounter with this God that we serve. Huh? Huh? When you when you anticipate, you expect a great move of God. People who don't expect much get exactly what they expect. All right. Get exactly what you expect. Oh, I, I know God's going to pay my bill. He paid that one bill. You get exactly what you expect because you spoke it out of your mouth. And when you spoke it out of your mouth, you began to stir the pot. And you sent forces into motion which caused you to get exactly what you wanted. So if you can serve a God who's able to do small things like that, this is the same God who parted the Red Sea. That wasn't a small task. People who don't expect much, they get exactly what they want. But people who expect much are, as the words of a song says, I won't be satisfied to heaven and base the earth. I won't be satisfied. This is why Jesus taught us to pray. Your will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Those things that Paul couldn't even begin to describe occurred and are in heaven right now. And God wants those things to manifest themselves in the earth realm. And since we have dominion over the earth realm, it is our job to pray. Your will be done in heaven as it is. Oh, my God. I won't be satisfied. Do heaven and means to do a move, God. A move, God. Hallelujah. I, I noticed something. You know, I, I sing a lot right now, especially. And it's not nothing new. Leola can tell you that it ain't nothing new. I always sing. But during the time period where I was really pressing upon the praise and worship team, what the flow meant, I could barely say a word. 
could barely say a word. I was pressing this into them because I wanted them to grasp what it was. Now look at them now. They'll come up here and they'll begin to just worship. She worship God. They begin to pour it out before God. It's not even a practice thing. It's something because, you know why, why it's that way? Because they've had an encounter. They've had an encounter with God. And when you have an encounter with God, things will never be the same in your life. You can't even begin to describe things and live the way that you used to live once you have a true encounter with God. You ain't even going to want to go back. That stuff is old. That stuff is worn out. That stuff is past you. You, that's way beneath me. I cannot go back to the way I used to be because I've had an encounter with God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I won't be satisfied with little things. I, I won't be satisfied with man. I expect more. I won't be satisfied with leaves. I expect more. I expect full figs. I won't be, I won't be satisfied. I expect more. But here's the problem. We come to God expecting so little. It's the problem with our thinking. See, our thinking presents an obstacle to our blessing. Hmm? Your blessing is over here, but your thinking has a big old block up there. Surely God won't do that for me. Your blessing is over here. You're right here. You're on the other side of your blessing. But you're letting your thoughts become that obstacle which is going to prevent you from getting what God truly has for you. Huh? You're going to settle for a whole lot less than what God is willing to give you because of your thinking. Yes, come on. I don't think I can have that. Oh, you have what you think? Huh? Because what happens is what you think is going to eventually come out of your mouth. And the Bible tells us you have what you think. We come expecting so little because we think what we think makes up our entire being and our thoughts come out of our mouth and the negative faithful faithlessness doubt drives us not to take the word of our father at heart huh that negativity that dwells inside of you constantly works. the word tells you to bring every thought under subjection where that come from where that come from it's that when you recognize that is not a godly thought Paul later in the scripture begins to talk about thinking on the good things of God. Yeah. When it's not a godly thought, you need to bring that thing under subjection, trace it down where it came from, and rebuke it at its root and pull it out of your life. Yeah. Man, hallelujah. Mm. My God, my God. See, doubt, doubt his word is described as a sin. Remember the 12 spies who went into Canaan? Kenham came back saying, we look like grasshoppers compared to them. Huh? They look like Shaq and we look like Michael Jackson. Hmm? We look like total midges when it compared to them. They came back and what they said, said this is the first time the Bible you see this, God said they brought back an evil report. Doubt is an evil report to God. God sees what's in your heart. He sees the faithfulness of your heart. He also sees the doubtfulness in your heart as well. And doubt is an evil report unto God. When you doubt what God's word says, then you are giving him back an evil report. Oh, my God, my God, my God. What's the scripture says that? Whom shall believe our report? And to who is the arm of God revealed? God's revealed this arm to us in his revelation. When we have encounters, he's revealing to us his battle plans. Huh? When we have encounters with God, we begin to understand, my God, his purpose for us. We begin to have a Jeremiah 29, 11 outlook in our lives, knowing that God is going to bless our circumstances, our situation, knowing that God is fully in control. evil report. They brought back an evil report impregnated with doubt. 
Fear and doubt contradicts peace. Fear and doubt contradicts peace. It contradicts peace. Huh? How can you possibly have the peace that surpasses all understanding when it can't get past that roadblock of doubt? You can't have it. You cannot have it. In order to get that peace that surpasses understanding, you've got to bring fear under subjection and know that God has given you many things, but he hasn't given you a spirit of fear. And fear and doubt contradicts that peace and it contrasts the wholeness that teaches us to follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men and wholeness without which no man shall see the Lord. You won't have an encounter. Huh? You won't have an encounter if you let doubt and fear rule your lives. I mean, we, we, we said things in the church such as, if it's God's will, which we can say amen to, but God wants us to act beyond. God has no problem with us asking for something that's beyond our wildest imagination. See, because God's overall, God's general will is to bless us beyond our wildest imagination. That's his general will. See, our problem is we get caught up in the middle of something out, outside of what God really wants. We get caught up in that doubt, and we have the will when we're caught up in doubt anyway. God wants us, and he, 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 he wants you to ask because you can urge and impact God to change things by your acts. You can. Huh? You can impact God to call, to change things by you asking him. Why? You ask him for something in the earth realm. He's giving you dominion over the earth realm. Huh? He's giving you dominion already over the earth realm. So he has no problem with you asking for something in the earth realm, no matter how outrageous it may look. Huh? God has given us dominion. Our dominion allows us to ask God that his will be done. Think about this. Each and every animal came to Adam to be named. The birds in the air. Huh? The fish in the sea. Huh? Animals, cattle that roam the earth, insects, everything came to Adam to be named. Why did it come to Adam to be named? Because God said, I've given you dominion. And God had the animals come to Adam to show homage to who Adam was in the realm. Huh? And as they came to Adam to show homage to who Adam was in the realm, the reason that he was able to give them a name is because God had given him dominion to give the name. Oh my God. Come on now. How many of you are taking your dominion and cursing your dominion? Oh no, no, I don't need to. I ain't going to have this. This ain't going to ever happen. I'm going to be sick. I got to watch out because I got breast cancer running in my family. On oh, next side, I'm going to have this. You give your dominion to the enemy and you're speaking death to yourself in your dominion. Another thing that causes people to fail to have an account with God is the yoke of tradition. The yoke of tradition. The yoke of tradition actually influences you to expect little God. It, it causes you to expect little God. Huh? I'm only going to get what my grandma got. The devil is a lie. My grandma didn't know she didn't know him like that. I know she had a relationship, but I, things have moved on, and I know him so well. I can read his word. I can determine his word. I know the difference between the indwelling versus the infilling, and because I know this, I can have more. Yes. Wow. Grandma wants you to have more anyway, because she believed in blessings for your children, your children, children. Wow. Huh? Your children, your children, children. She believed in that blessing. And this is what we got to believe in, the blessing for not only ourselves, but our children and our children's children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yoga tradition just chips away at your faith, though, and prevents you from having a godly encounter. You get caught all up. For so long, people of God have come before the God with so little experience. 
It's been said in their mind that God would not move on their behalf. Yeah. Huh? He would not move on their behalf. See, we gotta understand, no and not right now are not the same thing. Right. One answers no, while the other says, in my time, I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. But we get all caught up and confused and, and worried because we didn't get our answer right then and there. Huh? We gotta understand that God does things in his time for his perfect right. reasoning. Right. Hmm? Another hindrance is when you confuse inspiration with revelation. Uh -huh. Huh? Paul spoke in terms of revelation which gave him inspiration. Right. See, an encounter with God gives you degrees of revelation which in turn sparks inspiration in the receiver. Huh? Of the revelation and those whom he reveals to. In order to get revelation, you must have an encounter. You're not going to get the revelation until you have an encounter with God. You're not going to get it. Don't think that you can fool anybody thinking that you got revelation from God. Huh? You probably just had inspiration. <laughs> you some spiritual pepto bills, mom. In order to get your revelation, you must have an encounter, not an emotional high. Because uh -huh. emotional highs can be sparked by a good song. They can be sparked by very well-spoken words, things such as you got a good job, you got a nice pay raise, huh? a new car. All those things can spark your emotional high, which all inspire. Someone can come in and shout you out of the building. Shout you up one wall and down the other wall. Shout you off the pews. But leave you empty when the inspiration wears off. Leave you completely empty when the inspiration wears off. The first thing you say when they come in and they get you up in a good shout and, uh, and, 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 and you get you all hyper and stuff is, oh, wee, they anointed. Oh, wee, they anointed. Huh? But see, that's not necessarily true because you've got an understanding that gifts are given without. Huh? The anointing of the gift comes when you humble yourself to God and you have a godly encounter. See, see this, this is why so many gifted, talented people still not saved. It's a lot of gifted and talented people in the, in the world. It's a lot of gifted and talented people in the world. Don't fool yourself. I can run down and Beyonce has some gifts. Huh? There's a lot of gifted and talented people. Whitney Houston had some gifts. Michael Jackson had some gifts. Oh my God. Elvis Presley had some gifts. There are a lot of gifted and talented people in the world. But are they anointed? Oh, I don't think so. thing about the anointing, the anointing comes with the encounter. When you encounter God is when you get the anointing. Huh? In order to get, see God wants you to have the glory working inside of you. In order to get the glory revealed in us, we must have that revelatory encounter. Huh? We must have a revelatory encounter. The glory of God in Moses was not revealed until he came face to face with the Lord at the burning bush. And with each encounter, a deeper revelation of God came to him. See, Paul had so many encounters with God. A deeper revelation of God came to him with each and every encounter. Each and every encounter, he got deeper in the Lord. He began to get more humble. And who cannot get in the face of God and not be humble? I, I used to be, I, man, 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 I tell you what, can I talk about myself? I'm going to talk about myself. When I first got into ministry, I didn't have an understanding of certain things, right? And I used to think that I was so deep. I thought I was so deep, but I blessed the name of God that my pastor saw that in me, and he began to work in me, and he would say things to me to challenge me, to make me get myself in line. And by the time he came to a certain point in my life, and I started realizing who I was in God, this is when he started saying, you great man of God. But he knew who I was initially. 
And he began to work with me in order to break me and bring me down to a point where he can start declaring that I am a great man of God. See, you be thinking, you got it going on. I got the nicest car. I got the nicest house. I got this. I got that. Huh? Huh? Matter of fact, I can just about put a time on when he started calling me that. I think he started calling me that after the tree fell on my souped up minivan. Huh? And instead of going out buying myself a new cat or anything crazy like that, I bought my wife a nice little calm and everyday minivan. And I went and found myself a 19 and 89 Chevy Blazer. <laughs> with 200,000 miles on this thing. Huh? Highest ranking guy in the unit driving the worst car. Making more than everybody in the unit driving the worst car. Huh? It was, a, it was an ugly car. And my God, and the, and the Lord, I tried to get a car to my boys. They like, oh, that's all right. <laughs> I tried to get a truck to my boys. Like, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, you good. It's a great car. You good. I'm good. I'm good. I'll work. <laughs> Stop laughing, Kenny. And until, my God, my God, I became so humble with my encounter with the Lord that, 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 and I, and I had plenty of money. I got a nice settlement out of the van. But I became so humble by my encounter with God that the Lord had to cause that truck to break down to make me get another one. Had to cause the breakdown. Virginia has this inspection. You have to go through inspection. So I'm going through the inspection with the vehicle and the mechanic said, it's going to cost you about 800 to uh, fix this. And I said, and you can keep it? <laughs> so $800 to fix this. So you can keep it? I said, okay, that's fine. I ain't getting this fixed. Uh-uh. Deacon in the church. We're starting a lawn war business, a lawn cut business. Right? The Lord touched my heart and said, give it to him. So I went and gave it to him. He went and fixed it for seven dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> seven dollars and fifty cents. I'm like, oh my God! Oh, bless the name of our God. Thank you, Lord. I glorify God for that, though. I was happy for it. He's still driving that thing today. Okay. It had 207,000 miles on when I gave it to him. He's still driving this thing today. Huh? I, oh, let me tell you. In the, bush, in the midst of the humility that he brought me, he blessed me. In the midst of the humility, he blessed me. I'm sitting up here looking at the green truck I have today. That's what I bought. I'm sitting up here looking at something. I don't want no 200 $300, no $400 payment. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. So I'm riding around trying to figure out. And I said, I need to find a car. I need to find some other vehicle for myself. So I'm riding around looking at trying to find a vehicle for myself. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm pouting and stuff. I'm, I'm pouting. And I got up early one morning. The Lord spoke to my heart and said, your vehicle is on Fort Lee for you. Go find it. Mm -hmm. so I go up on Fort Lee. Vehicle was blue book at $12,000, right, Thirteen five. the guy wanted $7,000 for it, $7,000, he wanted half the price, when I called the bank and stuff, they said, oh, uh, what year was that, what did it have in it, and it had what, how many miles, they said, uh, you sure, I said, yeah, give me, here's the van, they said, oh yeah, Mr. Shaver, we cut your check right now. That ain't a problem. You can uh, buy that. That's a good deal. Huh? Buy that. Pay me less than $200 a month. Huh? God supernaturally blessed me because I was working to be humble before him. 
Once he humbled me, then he blessed me. When you're not humble, it's like having your hands up like this. When you are humble, it's like having your hands out. Lord. Huh? I will bless you once you are humble. Huh? I, well, I will exalt you when it's due time for you to be exalted. But first and foremost, I have to have your full attention. A revelatory encounter with God is so important. It's, and, and, and there's a gateway experience which, which is required for a revelatory encounter. There's a gateway experience. You have the indwell power of the Holy Spirit. Ah, shake. But in order to get the revelatory encounter with God, you have to be in field. You got to be in field. You cannot just be indwelled and on your way to heaven and catching hell on the trip. You got to be in field and got the hell underneath your feet while you're on your way to heaven. There's a gateway experience, which is the in field power of the Holy Spirit. The in field power of the Holy Spirit. See, people, people downplay the importance of being Holy Ghost field, speaking in tongues. They do. They downplay it. They downplay it. And when they downplay it, it allows you to play yourself right into a position that the enemy wants you to be in. Yes. Just like a master chess player, he gets you cornered, telling you it's not important. Uh -huh. Trust me, it's important. It's important. It's important. It's important. The devil wants you to be ignorant, though, because ignorance causes you to link around in carnality. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Huh? I believe unknowingly having a form of godliness will get you into heaven. But you're going to go through hell to get there. Hmm? As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're going to be scared. You're going to be intimidated. The power gifts of the Holy Spirit are not given to you until you get the infield power. Huh? One particular gift that we need to have. Guys, we need, really need to have this gift. We really need to have this gift. We need to have the ability to speak in unknown tongues. Yeah. That's, that's one of the most important gifts there is. Why? Three heavens, right? First, second, third heaven. When you don't have the ability to speak in unknown tongues, when the Spirit gives you utterance, you're speaking in manual words that the enemy does understand. Even if you're speaking deep Swahili, he knows that too. He been around, he studied, he knows that too, right? Even if he can speak in deep Swahili, it's stopping at second heaven. It's being blocked from being received into third heaven. Huh? And the enemy plays with your mind and plays with you and prevents your blessing from coming. When Daniel was praying, Daniel was praying, and he's a great man of God. Daniel was praying, he was praying in a tongue that the enemy understood. So the enemy knew what Daniel was praying. So Daniel's blessing was being hindered in the second heaven instead of coming fully through in the third heaven. It's why it's important to have that unknown tongue. It's important to have an unknown tongue because you have your blessing so blocked. You try to punch through second ever, but you can't punch through, huh? But when you have that gift of speaking in unknown tongues, what sounds like jabber to the enemy comes in and gets retranslated into heaven. Can I, can I teach? I, I need to teach this. Anybody remember the old modems? Remember, remember the old modems you used to have to have a modem on the outside of your computer to get on the internet? Right? Sound like an old banjo. Right? But that thing, and then you, if you're listening in on the phone or you're able to listen in, you can hear a faint sound that sounds almost exactly like what it is you just heard. Right? A modem is a modulator demodulator. Right? In other words, a modem in your computer begins to speak to the modems on the internet. You don't hear it now, but it occurs, right? It begins to speak to the modems on the internet. In other words, it says, I'm computer such and such and such and such, and I want access, right? 
huh? And then that, that computer at the modem on the other end said, oh, you are a computer such and such and such and such. I violated that and I give you access. Same thing with your blessings. Huh? Look, at, look at this. Let me make sure I can get this right. Modem on one end passes through all of the accesses of the internet, which is parallel to second heaven. Gets to third heaven. Third heaven verifies who it is. And third heaven grants access. Huh? I don't know. Somebody need to get that. Huh? This is why you need the gift of unknown tongue so that you are able to say, I am your child, God. And I need you, Lord God. I need your blessing. I need you to help me with this situation. And you speak an unknown tongue. It passes through second heaven as gibberish and reaches third heaven. And God dip and give you access. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I want a godly encounter. Yes. I want every godly encounter that I can get. I need more of him. Each and every time I encounter him, my life is changed a little bit more. More because of my encounter with him. Here's another privilege that people will have a godly relationship and they, they, they have the infilling power have. There's another thing to have, another privilege. Right? When you say father, when you say father, father, there ain't a there ain't a daddy in the world that's not affected when you say father. Why well, you think the first word to come out of baby's mouth most of the time is dad, 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 dad. Jenna, you can't wait to hear that. Huh? He can't wait to hear daddy. And when she said, when Hazel said daddy, everything is going to cease. Everything is dropped. <laughs> daddy. And, and fathers know when, when their child means something serious when they say daddy. Heaven help us when the child says something in distress and they say daddy. Daddy. You drop everything you're doing, you kick it over, and you begin to roll in that direction. When you have a relationship with the Lord, and you cry out to him, and you say daddy to him, he drops everything in the world and comes down to see about you. This is why Psalms 8 says, the angel said, I don't know what man is that you would care about him, but God says, I have made him a little lower than Elohim himself, and therefore I care about him, and I'm going to come down to see about him. That's a privilege of having godly encounters. When you have that relationship with the stand on the feet, y'all. Hallelujah. I hope someone was blessed today. And not only are you taught, but you begin to apply this word to your life. You begin to speak into the atmosphere your blessings. You begin to cry out, Papa Shido Kobo. I begin to cry out and speak. I'm letting, my, I'm letting my modem kick out right now. Hallelujah. I bless and glorify your name, Lord God. I magnify you. Hallelujah. 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 I bless your name, Lord God. Hallelujah for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace which you have shown toward us. I magnify your name in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm praying for someone right now. Hallelujah. 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 Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we ask right now you would touch that soul who's concerned about their diabetes. Hallelujah. The enemy has spoken to their heads and said, it's all right because it runs in the family. But you are a healing God. You are a healing God. And I speak healing not only to their body, but to their mind, Lord God. I speak revelatory healing to their very tongue, so they will begin to speak, Lord God. We thank you. 
we glorify you. I'm praying for someone's feet right now. Hallelujah. You've been to a podiatrist and you don't know what it is that's going on with your feet and he halfway explained it to you. But I speak by the oracles of God. He who shaped you out of clay shall shape your feet right now so that everything will operate in a manner in which God Almighty said that it would operate so that he will receive glory. Hallelujah. I speak that your arches are fixed right now in the name of Jesus. That the corns are removed right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.